What is up guys? Welcome to day 82 of Onshape. I know some of you guys are waiting for this so we can kind of see what's the point of a composite part. I'm just going to build this automata and I am, am expecting some error codes, but I'm also going to walk through the process and how we fix some of those. Let's just see how deep we get into it. So, so far we have two composite parts. We have the camshaft and handle and then we have the box. Notice that my cams and my follower rods are not part of a composite part yet. And we want to fix that. We want the cams to be part of that, that camshaft. So what I'm going to do is do the drop down of this folder here, take my camshaft and handle command for composite part, and drag this down to the bottom. Now I'll be able to add our cams into that composite part. If things work well, we then hit the green check mark. We can then see when I make my camshaft and handle inactive, it does the whole thing. We're not going to add in our follow rods as composite part because they move relative to the cam, not to each other. So one you know, follow rod might be going down while the other one is going up. So we don't want to do anything there. We could go ahead and rename this. So camshaft, uh, we can call this camshaft, cam, and handle. So we have, there we go. Did I name that correctly? I think I, uh, there we go. So now we have two composite parts and follower rods. And we should be able to put this in our assembly really quickly. So let's do that. Let's go ahead and plus sign. Let's go ahead and add and our create assembly. And I'm going to insert, and this is where like the beautiful part of this comes from. We're going to go to the automata folder here, but I'm not going to pull in parts. I'm going to pull in composite parts and I'm going to make parts inactive. So that way you see down here, I really have two composite parts. We have our box and then we have our camshaft. Now, some of you might even see the value of gold in this moment. I only have two parts because they're technically considered sub assemblies right now and I didn't have to do anything else with some of those mates. So if I were to go ahead and take our box and fix it, make sure it doesn't move, notice that I can't move the bushings. Those are already fixed. This is gonna make a whole lot easier when it comes to making our, our commands. It just makes our job a whole lot easier. So let's go ahead and hit a revolute. And we know that the inside of this circle is going to rotate on the inside of this circle. I clicked on the wrong one, so let's deselect that. Let's try that again. Revolute. I'm just so excited. This is like going to save hours and hours and hours of work. Let's see if I got that right. Nope, I still selected the wrong one, didn't I? Let's try that one more time. Revolute. The inside of this cap. There we go. Is actually going to sit on the outside of this circle right here. Okay, go ahead and hit play. Just make sure it ro rotates as well. Looks great to me. So let's hit the green check mark, and things look good to go. So we only have two parts, technically two sub assemblies, and one mate. So if I and then animate this. Let's go ahead and then animate. We hit play. Notice how much time we just saved. Like a ridiculous amount. So all we need to do here now is go ahead and throw in our follower rods. I do suspect there are going to be some problems here. And I'm going to go ahead and find follower rod 1. Remember each of my follower rods have a name because, you know, left to right. So there's three there's four, and then there's five. Because your follower rods might be different links, you can't just make one follower rod and throw it in there and call it done. And so what we are gonna do then is just keep those in there. Now I know there's a way you can kind of pull in the whole like part studio, but just to showcase the sweetness that is composite parts, we're gonna go ahead and keep that as, so we're just gonna have a slider mate. We're gonna say that this is gonna slide past. This is kind of hard to select. There's a lot going on here. So we're going to choose the face we want, hold down the shift key, and that keeps that face active. Select on that. Go ahead and hit play. Looks good to me. 
I'm not really too concerned about the offsets right now because we're going to do the tangent mate. So let's go ahead and hit the green check mark for that. And then let's go in, zoom in, shift. There we go. Fast forward montage. is we have our five follower rods and the slider constraints put in. Let's do the next part. And this is why we put a point on each one of our follower feet is because it creates a lot, uh, really smooth action or just an easier time when it comes to the tangent mate. And so what I'm gonna do in here is I'm gonna choose, notice when I click on tangent mate, it says face, edge, or vertex. And so we can kind of make sure that the system works smoothly by choosing a vertex to use rather than a face or an edge. And so it makes sure that this single point is always tangent to the surface it's on. And that's it. That's all we got. There we go. And so I notice if I then rotate this, notice how that slider then is able to actuate on that cam and we don't run into any issues. Let's go ahead and just keep doing this with our other pieces and see if we run into an issue. I do suspect we will, but let's just make it happen. So we're gonna click on that vertex. We're gonna click on this face. Now this should work, but I'm gonna test it with each one just because um, things happen, it's the way it is. But by using that tangent mate when we were making our cams and making sure that everything meets at a perfect tangent to each other, we actually make sure our geometry is able to use for the tangent mate. Notice that similarity in vocab there. We're just gonna do one more thing, and I'm going to, let's do tangent again. Let's hit this vertex spot right here, and then let's choose this face. We might run into an issue, but if we do, that's okay. We're just gonna go ahead and right click, hit animate, and then hit play and then see how it says, well, unable to compute. Apply transform, okay. So let's see what we can do to fix this. And that's because this hex cam right here doesn't have tangential faces. These meet at an angle. They don't, they're not rounded off. All right, let's fix it. Well, there's a couple different fixes you could do. And one thing that I tend to do the most is I go back to my, my hex cam. So if we're gonna go back here, we have our timeline nice and organized, so we're able to find our hex cam. And then we are going to go back to the sketch here, make everything else inactive. And then I'm going to apply a small fillet to each corner. So we're gonna click on each corner, click on fillet. Now the, the default there is a quarter inch fillet, not a fillet, but a fillet. We can change that to a much smaller number. So I'm gonna do 0 0.05. And to the naked eye, you really can't see much of a difference on the hex cam, but it creates this geometry to where you have a straight line meets a tangent curve back to a, another straight line. And this should work in this instance. Notice how it's already fixed there. I'm gonna go ahead and hit right click, hit animate, hit play, and there we go. We just took our hex cam and we fixed it by manipulating the geometry to be in such a way where the cams always have a tangent face. The snail cam is gonna be a little tricky because the problem is, is that this face is perpendicular to this point, and so, Unshape runs a little bit of an issue and says, we don't really know what you want to do with this part. And so um, for the sake of time, we're going to save that for the next video. But let's go ahead and try to get this last one in. So we have tangent. We have a single point. That face. And we should be good 
to go. Let's go ahead and right click, hit animate, hit play. And we have everything working as expected, except for that snail cam, which does require a little bit of finagling. And absolutely, we're gonna hit that up on the next video. This is the smoothest I've seen as far as getting the cams to work. If you've got a better system or somebody else has created a better one, awesome, let me know. But this is kind of a one-stop universal method that works for all of the cams, regardless of what you try to make. You guys are awesome, stay awesome, and I will see you for the next video where we're gonna wrap up this series, fix our snail cam, and then call it done. Take care.